cotton? Well, we're going to keep talking about the same set of facts. Okay. I mean, Ms. Coe, you make it sound like the Supreme Court that you were, was clarifying unclear law, um, but that's not what the Supreme Court said in Tandon, which again is about people worshiping in their home, having Bible studies, um, and Gavin Newsom prohibiting that when restaurants and casinos and bars and strip clubs and movie studios were allowed to continue functioning. Um, you wrote that, quote, with little case law to support them, the plaintiffs are last argue that their in-home gatherings are being treated more harshly than other activities, such as filming or going to laundromats or visiting hotels. <clears throat> the Supreme Court agreed. Not only did they disagreed, they said that far from little case law to support them, they were overturning a ruling for the fifth time that the court had rejected Ninth Circuit cases on California's pandemic restrictions. The court noted that not only did you get it wrong in your decision, but it's unsurprising, it is unsurprising that the litigants are entitled to relief. They said not only do these kinds of restrictions require strict scrutiny, which you did not apply, you applied in the alternative, but you also said that it would pass strict scrutiny. The Supreme Court also felt the need to say that their precedent, quote, really means what it says. So I know we keep coming back to this, but we keep coming back to it because I, I feel like your, your decision was plainly contrary to the law at the time, and, and you keep portraying it as if it was just clarifying what was a very obscure and difficult area of the law. It, is it really that obscure to say that if California wants to allow casinos and bars and strip clubs and movie studios to stay open, they also have to allow Christians to have a Bible study in their home? So the, the, the factual evidence that was before me was uncontroverted by the plaintiffs that the risk of transmission of COVID is greater when you're in a home versus in commercial entities that are actually regulated and can be subject to misdemeanor criminal prosecutions for not complying with the restrictions. That was the evidence before me. Now, having, having said that, I was following the precedent of the Ninth Circuit, which I'm required to do. I'm in the lowest level position in the federal system as a trial judge. And they said, you look at the risk of transmission, you look at these seven factors, and that's I mean, are, what I are, did. And, and what, do you, what do you do when that Ninth Circuit precedent, as is often the case, is plainly contrary to the Supreme Court, since the Ninth Circuit is the most reverse court in America? I don't think it's my role as a district court judge to just do what I want and ignore the higher court. I, I think it's my obligation to follow my circuit precedent. Okay, so so let's 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 leave Tandon v. Newsom, the religious liberty case then, since you say it's not your role to do what you want. Let's turn to a case uh, involving the FTC and Qualcomm. FTC at Apple's urging sued Qualcomm uh, because Apple didn't like that Qualcomm's pricing structure meant that royalties on Qualcomm's chips were more expensive if the phone they powered was more expensive. So the FTC uh, was doing Apple's bidding. You ruled against Qualcomm. You didn't just rule in the case of Apple specifically. You tried to force Qualcomm to renegotiate all of its chip contracts worldwide, worldwide. And then the Ninth Circuit overruled you, finding that your understanding of antitrust law, law was not just incorrect, but they ruled that you were trying to implement, and this is a quote, a trailblazing application of antitrust laws. And that this trailblazing was, again, this is a quote from the Ninth Circuit, an improper excursion beyond the outer limits of the Sherman Act. So if you're confirmed as a circuit court judge, how, how are we to be certain that you're not going to continue to go on such trailblazing improper occursions beyond statutory text and precedent, not just in the antitrust domain on something as important as semiconductor chips, but in every other area of law? In the FTC v. Qualcomm case, I was actually relying on two precedents of the Ninth Circuit. Microsoft versus Motorola, the first case was decided in 2012. The second case was decided in 2015. They held that if you are a patent owner and you go to a standard setting body and you tell that body, 
if you adopt my patents into the standard that everyone worldwide will practice, I will give anyone a fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory license. And the court held that that obligation requires you then to give that fair, reasonable, non-discriminatory license to all comers. That is what Microsoft v. Motorola says. And that was even the understanding of Qualcomm. That is what they told the IRS in a recorded conversation in 2012. When Motorola wasn't giving a license to Qualcomm, Qualcomm made the same demand to Motorola saying, you have a FRAND obligation, a fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory obligation to license us your standard essential patents because that is the commitment you made. And so repeatedly throughout the documents, we had a long, lengthy trial, and all of this was based on the record. My opinion was 233 pages. I made credibility determinations. I made factual findings. And that was Qualcomm's understanding as well throughout all the documents that they knew they had an obligation. So I understand that um, the, the decision that I entered is completely vacated. Uh, and is completely um, legally just invalid. So I will follow the precedent of the Ninth Circuit, and, but I just wanted to let you know, by, by defending my decision, I'm in no way saying that it's still good law. It's not. But I did just want to let you know, at the time, what was in my mind. I really did think that I was following the law, and I really sincerely was trying to do my job. I, I understand. My, my time's expired. I just want to say that you say that you're following Ninth Circuit precedent. It's the Ninth Circuit that reversed you and didn't say it was a close call, said it was a trailblazing application of antitrust laws and an improper excursion beyond the outer limits of those laws. Thank you, Senator Cotton. 